Now, before I unbox the Sonos Beam Gen 2, a little bit of context. I personally have a Sonos system that I bought with my own money. I currently own the original Beam Gen 1 since 2018, and I'm a big fan of it. Not only does it produce good sound, obviously not as good as the Sonos Arc, but it produces fantastic sound for its price point. And when you pair it up with the rest of Sonos products, you get some ridiculously good surround sound. The one thing the Beam Gen 1 lacked though was the codex. It didn't have Dolby Atmos, it never got software to upgrade it, and that's exactly what this Beam Gen 2 is here for. They were able to do this by keeping the exact same design and form factor, which is something that a lot of customers appreciate because not everybody has the space for a massive speaker in front of their TV. So it's kind of incredible the sound quality you get out of something this small. And inside the box, of course, you get some Sonos paperwork, which is their let's get started guide, which I completely just butchered. So just like the previous version, you get the standard power cord. The good news though, is that if you order the white version of the Sonos Beam Gen 2, it's going to be a white cord. In the previous model, it came with a black cord and a lot of people just didn't like that. It comes with the HDMI to optical connector, and then you also get the HDMI cable. Now, I went with the black model because the rest of my Sonos products are black, so I wanna keep the colorway the exact same thing. But as you can see here, as soon as I take it out, really hard to tell the difference between this and the original Sonos Beam. In fact, I have the original one right here, and it's the exact same size. Like, there is no difference in terms of the dimensions or weight. It's about six pounds. The only thing, or only way rather, to tell the difference is on the front. The original Beam used this sort of mesh filter that surrounds it. On the new model, they went with like a polycarbonate, which is supposed to be, a, I don't know, a little bit more durable, and it doesn't pick up as much dust and dirt like the original mesh filter does. In terms of ports, it's exactly the same. You have your power connector, your reset button or link button, RJ45, and then you have your HDMI port. The only difference is that the new one supports eARC, whereas the old one supports ARC. So what's the difference between HDMI ARC and eARC? It's really simple. eARC can push more bandwidth, which is really important for codecs like Dolby Atmos. Now, Everything else is the same in terms of speaker layout. You still get the five Class D amplifiers, you get the four elliptical midwoofers, the three passive radiators, the one centered tweeter. It still has those far field mic air race to pick up your voice if you're trying to use like a Google Assistant. You still have the capacitive touch buttons at the top. In fact, they're the exact same look and layout as the previous one. And you get true play for tuning, and then of course you can group it with other Sonos speakers you have in the room to set up a true surround sound system. Now this, just like the previous one, is still compatible with over 100 music services. Now here are the things that are truly different. Number one, you get a faster processor with Gen 2. This faster processor is about 40% faster and enables features like Dolby Atmos support, especially when you combine it with eARC that has faster bandwidth. On top of that, if you've ever set up a Gen 1 Sonos, it's not super quick, it takes time. Gen 2 is supposed to be quicker. It has NFC built in, so you can just take your phone, which I've already done right here, and then you tap it on the top of the device, and it'll allow your Wi-Fi credentials to be moved over to the app much quicker than have to manually doing it yourself. Now, Dolby Atmos has already been out on the Arc, which obviously sounds better since it has more speakers to utilize, but they did add two more air rays to the Beam. Now, Ares is based on software, and because it has the faster processor, it can distribute that information a lot quicker. The original one had three, this has five, and the two new Ares are dedicated to height and sound information. It can also handle more surround sound formats, so if you're like a hardcore gamer and you couldn't get like DTS and certain Dolby codecs to work on your previous Gen 1, that's gonna be supported on Gen 2, so your gaming experience is gonna have a better sound. And it's using a dedicated five gigahertz radio in the background to connect to all the other subwoofers and surrounds inside of your home. So there's gonna be less lag when the music is being transferred to different positions in your home. It's just gonna sound a lot more cohesive. Are you so calm? Long story. Yeah. Now, obviously you can't hear what I'm hearing because this video is not recorded in Dolby Atmos. And most importantly, 
you would need Dolby Atmos equipment to hear the sound that I just showed. But the reason why I'm showing this clip from Tomorrowland is because the sirens or the warning signals in the background are very important. With the Gen 1 beam, it didn't feel like it was separated from the scene. Like if you were in a space and there were warning signals going across the entire room, you would hear it everywhere. With Gen 1, it felt more direct. On Gen 2, it was separated. It felt like it was enveloping me, like, like I was in the room and I was experiencing the warning signal every few seconds. The interesting thing though was the dialogue. When Chris Pratt speaks to the other guy about how to, you know, clock his gun or whatever, it felt more direct with the Gen 1. And that's kind of a benefit in some ways because it makes it easier to hear the dialogue. But with Gen 2, there was a bit more reverb because the room that they were in was so spacious that it felt like it needed to be a bit more echoey. Now obviously Gen 2 felt more realistic, but it made it a bit tougher to hear the characters speak to each other. Now once the portal started sucking everybody in on Gen 1, it was super direct. Like you would hear going back and forth between left and right, sometimes in the middle, and it was it sounded great on Gen 1. But as soon as I switched to Gen 2, again, I got the separation. I felt people being warped over here, I felt people being warped over here, I felt people being warped over here. Now this wasn't as potent as listening to the Sonos Arc. I felt like that did a significantly better job of representing Dolby Atmos, as it should. It has more speakers, it has bigger drivers, it should do a better job. But I was thinking that Gen 2 wasn't going to do a good job because of its size and form factor. But I walked away feeling really impressed. Like I felt the audio more with Gen 2 compared to its predecessor. And I thought that was remarkable considering they really didn't change the driver size. Now, as soon as they got to the top of the building, the dialogue that I was speaking about before felt more direct on Gen 2 because they were no longer in this big room, right? They were no longer in this big room, so it felt like you were there listening to it in front of you. Interestingly though, when they were dropping into the pool, it was sort of the same idea as them being warped up. On Gen 1, you would feel it going left and right, maybe in the middle sometimes. On Gen 2, it got a bit more separated. It felt like a person was dropping in the pool over here when it was on a scene of something else, and then you see the person dropping in the pool right in front of you, so you hear it over here. And I thought that was pretty remarkable. But honestly, the best experience is when you have the rest of the Sonos devices working in unison. I hooked up my subwoofer and my two Sonos Play 1s, and that's where I heard the best sound. The rears would take care of stuff that were in the back, the subwoofer would push the bass, and then the Beam Gen 2 would do the sound separation in the front, and it just felt like I was significantly more immersed in the content that I was watching. Now, this is truly an amazing sound bar, and I still think it's perfect for very small spaces. If you have a bigger space, I still think you should gravitate towards the Sonos Arc 2. And I also think it's a fantastic device if you want to experience Dolby Atmos in a smaller sound bar. Now, if you have the original Beam 1, I want you to go listen to it first before deciding to upgrade because I still feel like the Beam 1 packs a very nice punch. But if you're truly into Dolby Atmos and you have that small space, then you're probably gonna hear the benefits of going with Gen 2 instead. I hope that clears things up for you. I, I truly wish I could just play it for you through these speakers, but unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to tell unless you go listen to it for yourself because everything would have to be recorded in Dolby Atmos and then you would have to have the equipment to listen to it. So it just, it just won't work in terms of a review. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.